Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope from Tektronix. This one is a type 317. It is a one channel scope and it's uh, 10 megahertz. It's rated for 10 megahertz at least. The an initial design is from 1959. And that one was uh, using um, PL259 connectors. This one is a little bit later model uh, from the start of the 60s. And that model uses BNC connectors. It is still an all tube oscilloscope. And it's quite compact. Um, still a little bit heavy and all that. But it is very, very compact uh, for a tube oscilloscope. Uh, and especially from that uh, time period. The rear side of the unit. I think there's a uh, big fan inside this uh, unit. Definitely uh, easy to remove this filter so you can clean it up. I should maybe do that. There is a ground lift for the cathode don't know why you would like to do that and that seems a little bit dangerous it says this is wired for uh, 220 and the operating range is 198 to 235 so this is great uh, this is what I need oh this connector is a little bit annoying but all right Yes, there was indeed a very big fan. See, it looks like it needs one little drop of lubrication. So I'll have to fix that. It will spin, I guess, but this motor is not super strong to handle. See, to handle a lot of load like that. So we really want this to spin more freely. So the filter is... Uh, like that it looks like somebody has been sitting on it or something like that easy clean it even says here how you clean this flush from dirty side with hot or soapy water all right so we're gonna do that that means we're probably going to lose those really cool original labels. Specially designed for the higher air in capacities. Okay. So we should not use conventional filters because they load this fan too much. So yes. And this is of course because it's completely full of tubes and it's running really really hot and it's very very compact so you need a lot of airflow through this unit so after a little bit of cleaning with a paint brush it looks a lot more beautiful but the more i poke around with this fan the the worse it gets i think also when i look like here the rear side of the blades is like completely full of dust, so I need to go and give this compressed air and all that. So, after a little bit of lubrication, it goes super, super smooth. Ha <laughs> it was that easy. So what I do to get oil into that exact spot down there, the bearing on both sides, I put actually oil and this little wooden stick here and then when I do like this and put it in here the oil is gonna slide down this wooden stick and then it's gonna land exactly where I want it to go and I also did that on the inside while tilted the whole unit like this so the oil will go exactly where I want it to go so nice and easy I also move the shaft a little bit like this in and out. I wanted to take uh, off the fan blade, but 
this is one of those annoying odd sized set screws and I'm just not able to find anything that matches that one. Oh, how annoying. After a little bit of paintbrush and a little bit of compressed air, the unit now looks really nice and shiny. Look how nice that is. I mean, this one is 63 years old. Oh, oh that is beautiful. So the air intake cools the hot rectifier diodes and uh, rectifier tubes for high voltage. I guess that is what their stuff is doing. High voltage regulation. So that one will also get warm. But the rest is just low power tubes well, they even part numbered those tubes they're probably important i want to go through everything and make sure that everything is in good contacts and all that kind of stuff there are quite a few really really cool design tricks in this one so I would like to show you that. So this is the bottom. Tektronics really loved to use those white ceramic isolators, standoffs for soldering all sorts of parts like this, building tube equipment. They're very, very good isolators. So, that is what you'll see in a lot of t uh, old Tektronic equipment. I think it's actually a very, very special silver coating. Uh, and I, I believe they invented the technique of doing this. Insert a metal thingy, uh, solderable into ceramics like that. And you need a special high silver uh, solder to perform service on these. Otherwise, you're going to um, destroy them. So this is what you need to remember. Look at that for high speed. We got some special grounding for the attenuator and all that kind of stuff. So, but this is only 10 megahertz, but it's really built like it should be able to handle a little bit more than that. And what you see here is actually really what I wanted to talk about. This is the vertical amplifier, or the output from the vertical amplifier, as you see down here, that tube. And that output goes, of course, in differential mode to the vertical deflection. So what you see here is a delay line created with inductors and capacitors along the line. And all the capacitors along the line, they're adjustable, as you can see here. So we've got a ton of those inductors. So here in the bottom, you see the first three sets of them. And let me swap this around so you can see some more. And this is the left side of the unit. Deflection amplifier tube, delay line, capacitors, variable capacitors. And then we just go on and on. Oh, let me rotate the camera a little bit like this so you can easier see what I'm talking about so the delay line goes around here all the way and all those needs to be carefully adjusted for impedance and all that kind of stuff and then we go here and it goes to the CRT but that is just how you delay your signal so you're able to see the first start of your tricked sig signal. Also you will notice that the CRT is angled and this one is a high voltage high brightness tube and this angle is to give you as much light directly up your face when you're doing fast 
stuff or short tiny pulses that just comes once in a while, you'll still be able to pick them up. Very compact front end with all those tubes here. It even says All the tubes there are numbered and got extra special labels and I don't know what. Trimmers for all the different settings of the attenuator. Ooh, yo, yo, that is nice. And this is the top. Let's see if we can get some light. Anode connection. The end of the delay line. And that will be the anode. Supply, we've got some more parts here and says, ooh, dangerous, oh, you can't go in there and whatnot. High voltage is adjustable. Got some neon bulbs here, probably high voltage protection. And they're not just hanging in their leads, no, they secured them nicely at the end here, so it's all mechanically good, stable. I kind of like the way that they build stuff this way. It was a little bit difficult to get all the way in here, but I really wanted to show you the high voltage. It's made of a uh, little sexy switch mode converter. We got five diodes like that, um, tube rectifier. And uh, they got different windings, especially for the filament that goes through the transformer like this, because they're connected up and down like that in zigzag. So they're tripling the voltage all the way to nine kilovolts using those five diodes. And that will be the tubes for the voltage regulation and the switch mode, high voltage supply, and this uh, pot meter here is the high voltage uh, adjustment. So before I turn this on for the very first time, I'm going through all the knobs and switches and massaging them a little bit just to feel how is everything going on. Is it feeling all right? See, this one is nice and loose. This one is very, very hard to turn. And this one, I couldn't hardly move it. I was so afraid to break this mechanical coupling there is here. So my trick is to take one of those pipette things like this and just a few drops of alcohol here on this shaft entry because this old lubrication you got in here, it turns it itself into chewing gum. But a little bit of alcohol and uh, some time and massage like this, it actually works pretty good. And then it goes nice and smooth and it will actually stay like this for the next 20 years before you need to do anything about it again. So that is all you have to do. A few drops of alcohol and just make sure that when you drop alcohol here, it's also going to go all over the place like I just did here because I was a little bit silly. So now I need to wait until that is completely dry before I power it up anyway. I feel I am ready for the first power up. And what I've done is I set all knobs in the middle more or less and for stuff that I think is more or less relevant, auto trigger and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's an output from the calibrator. I connected that to the input. So power is on and then I will crank up the input voltage very, very slowly this way. I'll be able to see if there's any shorts or anything weird in any of the tubes or whatnot. So when the tubes start to warm up, I should of course get something here. And as long as it's only 30 watts, 60 watts input voltage, and I can easily just crank up. 80 volts, 40 watts. Now the fan starts to rotate. Yeah, 100 
and 10 volts and it's 70 watts and then now watts goes down let's just crank it up that is not a problem at all two hundred watts are you kidding me we got light here it is so bright it's almost hurting my eyes intensity scale illumination seems to be working I don't see a beam yes I see a beam is right there what is going on that looks really weird aha so that is of course the calibrator we are watching here that is Let's play a little bit. Why don't we see? So that is... Uh-huh. That looks like we got some ripple on the power supply, right? After I was powering it up, I did smell something and power consumption was going absolutely berserk. And if you look here, that is some of the capacitors up here and they are getting very very warm very very fast so definitely something is not as it should be the power resistors right here i do expect them to get warm but there was a very intense weird smell and then power consumption went over 300 very very fast so of course i monitor power consumption and then I just turn stuff off so that is a showstopper right now and it is all my fault for not paying good enough attention look at that I found the fault that tube is definitely not working and that is probably what is controlling the high voltage um for the big power pentode right there so this is called v666 definitely a good number for a tube that is causing problem huh so here is the power supply schematic uh, of this tektronic uh, 317 um the tube uh here with the red arrow that is the broken tube so that means with uh, no current uh, through this tube, the anode's just gonna be uh, plus 420 volts. The unregulated voltage is just gonna go straight through the, the output uh, triode for the plus 300 volt rail. So that means we're gonna have more or less close to 420 volt on that one, unregulated. And uh, also, uh, look at the capacitor C146 uh, uh, that is also going to be hammered with 420 volts instead of 300 so that is not really nice if you look to the right you'll see a resistor that goes down to minus 150 volt that comes from the uh, minus 150 volt uh, voltage reference that is made uh, with super high stability and great care and all that kind of stuff. So this is what you need to uh, um, adjust and check first and then adjust and check uh, the 300 volts uh, and then adjust on R662 for 300 volts, obviously. If you could do it the other way around, it's going to be a back and forth uh, kind of thing and that is uh, not correct. I can't believe it how stupid that was to power it up like that and why the heck didn't I see that broken tube but of course it was hidden behind the big big 
double triode. At the beginning I thought it was a power pentode, but it is of course a doubled triode, and that is the 6AU6. It is uh, more or less compatible with EF94, so I'm now gonna go and search for my tubes, but here in the calibrator there is another 6AU6. So I could just borrow that one and see if everything else seems to be working. Um, that is a good idea, I think so, because I think I will be able to live without the calibrator for a, a little while. Also, I wanted to inspect the, the capacitors in volt. What kind of voltage can they handle and how much did I blow up? Well, I mean, this tube was probably dead a long time ago and somebody else tried to power this up and then it starts smelling. So, or this capacitor up here is probably already blown up and that is uh, in the anode circuits or super high voltage kind of stuff. So I don't know if I'm able to power this up again, but we'll see how much it breaks. Or this one was dropped or something like that because you can see there's cracks down here. And by the way, be super careful when you remove cracked tubes, especially when you see they're white, oopsie doopsie. If you see they're white at the top, that means there's potentially a crack in the tube. So when you try and pull this up the socket, it might as well just crack or completely uh, dissolve between your fingers. And that is a very good way to cause a very, very big cut in your fingers. Um, you're, of course, supposed to take them out with this silicone uh, rubber uh, pull-out tool for tubes. I just really cannot find it. It's so annoying, but I used to have a few of these, but I definitely need to go and find it again. Let's try and crank up the power again here and see if there's any success. Oh, just gonna give it 47 volts for a little while until I preheat all the filaments a little bit. So that means they are ready to rock and roll. And then I will power up my thermal camera. So we should be able to see if there's anything bad going on, especially with those capacitors. If this is a leak that is going on so I will actually oh that is annoying that is difficult to see I'll just monitor from over here okay oh, I got scared that was a uh, sound from the fan turning on so that is a hundred and twenty volts we're powering up real nice I see some stuff getting warm there. Yes, that is that capacitor. So that needs replacement. So I need to stop here. <clears throat> that sucks. And it is in the high voltage. If this one cracks over or ox over it. I mean, I'm definitely gonna cause a lot of damage. What else have we got? That is, yeah, you see, we got nice. Oh, we don't have any sweep. Why don't we have sweep? That is because we are not in that is weird, because that tube was only supposed to do uh, calibrator. What? Let me try and show you how beautiful it is with a thermal camera here. You can really see what is going on inside. Of course I turned this off. So heat from that component is also reflecting into that other component behind it. 
at least that is what I think we're seeing here. The other one of same type right there is so cold you can't even see it. I'm so sure, sorry for shaking the cameras like this, but it's just impossible to film this in any other way, really. And look at that! My scope is now working! Ha ha! <laughs> it's not the most beautiful curve from the oscillator, but of course I'm also using another oscillator um, or calibrator uh, tube, so I kind of... Maybe that is why. Or maybe it's just, yeah, you see, all those switches here, they need a little bit of massage. But then it's going to be perfectly fine. It's a nice, beautiful picture. Very, very bright if you crank it up. So don't do that. The trigger is also a little bit funny. See, if I go in the slow speeds like this, I think it's like that. You can see it is a little bit, there's a little bit of ripple. So I think it's just ripple on the calibrator oscillator. What I did is I am using the calibrator oscillator tube, that one, for my voltage regulation, that one that was broken. And I don't have an EF94 or a 6AU6 but I did find EF93 and it's slightly compatible. Well, got different parameters and all that, but same pinout. And it seems to be uh, oscillating quite fine here. All I care about just to get this calibrator oscillating. And then the scope is alive. Oh, by the way, what I thought was capacitors up here, that's actually power resistors. So it's, of course, they're supposed to be warm. So that is perfectly fine. And this is why they're mounted like that, is to dissipate the heat and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that was a lucky, lucky day. This is a five megahertz signal. I am getting a little bit of extra tricks like that. It is a little bit, see like that, it is a little bit tricky to adjust trigger level and stability and all that kind of stuff. But once it gets... I don't know. You see this sweep also slows down a little bit before it stops. Of course this is how it is. But I think it should be able to go a little bit higher than that. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 megahertz. So can we do that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you would call this. Well, that is the status of this good old 63 years old oscilloscope. It is back to life with a new tube. So thank you very much for watching. I am not going to play any more with this scope for now. It was a lot of fun to get it up and running. So please come again soon and see some more fun teardown videos. Bye bye.